Joined here today by my TA Serenity for this machinery video. So the equation you see on the screen right now is the mobility equation, also called the Kutzbach criterion. And you use this equation to find out how many degrees of freedom your two-dimensional planar mechanism has. The best part about this equation is by the time you get to the end of this video, you're not even gonna need to have it written down in your notes. You're gonna understand what it means so well that you will just solve these problems intuitively without even referring back to this equation. And you're gonna nail it 100% every time. I'm gonna start off by explaining each term of the equation when applied to a simple mechanism, just a basic four bar linkage. Then I'm gonna work through three increasingly complex example problems, but they're gonna go really fast. These problems are actually not very long at all. And at the end, I'll give you a bonus tip on how to check your answer to see if it actually makes sense. All right, I want you to think back to statics. And you remember drawing free body diagrams and writing out the equations of equilibrium. Sum of forces in the x direction, sum of forces in the y direction, and a sum of moments about a point. For each free body, you have these three equations of static equilibrium because a free body in 2D can move horizontally in the x direction, it can move vertically in the y direction, or it can rotate. That's the three at the front of this mobility equation. Each moving piece can move in each of these three directions. And the n minus one just represents how many moving pieces there are. So in this equation, n represents the number of links in your system. But remember when we're describing mechanisms, we include ground as a link, but ground doesn't move. So this is why n minus one, you subtract the link that represents ground, right? You're subtracting the fixed link so the whole first part of this equation, three times n minus one, is just three directions of motion for all of the things that can move. The second half of the equation, the J1 and the J2, means that you restrict motion at each joint. A J1 is also called a lower pair, and this is a joint that only allows motion in one direction. An example of this would be a pin joint. When you're drawing a free body diagram, you have to add two forces for a pin joint. You add a force in the X direction and a force in the Y direction because a pin joint only allows rotation. So minus two J1 because you're subtracting the X direction motion and the Y direction motion. A roller joint would be considered a J2, also called an upper pair. These sort of joints only restrict motion in one direction while still allow sliding in the other direction or rotation. So in that case, you only subtract one times the number of J2 joints because they each only restrict motion in one direction. And that's it, this is the whole mobility equation. But there's a lot of different types of joints and a lot of different ways that these joints can look. So just consider each joint individually, how many directions of motion does it restrict? Subtract that many from your mobility. So this four bar linkage has three total links that can move times three is nine, there are four pin joints, which each restrict two directions of motion. Nine minus eight equals one. So a four bar linkage has mobility of one. That means it has one degree of freedom, or it can be controlled by one single motor, or if you know the angle of just one piece, you can solve for every other angle for the whole rest of the mechanism. First example, we've got an eight bar linkage here where I've noted that link one is ground. This big quadrilateral here, you see the diagonal lines beneath it, that is ground. That's a fixed link that does not actually move. So just to explain what this picture is representing, this highlighted line here is a link. It's labeled as link number two. Just consider this to be a metal rod. Then that triangle labeled as link number four, consider that to be like a metal plate that has three different connection points to it. So it can connect to three different links. So in total, there are eight links labeled on this drawing, but the first one is ground, which is the fixed link, which can't move. So we're not including that in mobility. So if I count the number of moving pieces in this system, there are only seven. So the total mobility of this system is three times seven or 21 before we subtract away any of the joints. So the only joints in this system are pin joints. And as I mentioned before, a pin joint restricts motion in two directions. It doesn't allow it to move up and down or left to right. It only allows rotation. So since it restricts motion in two directions, we're gonna subtract two for every pin joint in this drawing. So I labeled in red 10 different pin joints. Two times 10 is 20. 
So started with 21 possible motions based on the links, subtract 20 based on all the constraints from the joints, and we're left with a mobility M equals one, which means controlling just one of these links will automatically drag every other link into its correct place. Now, just to explore what mobility means, suppose we removed link five, this highlighted link. If we remove that link, we'd be removing one link and two joints. So if we have six links and only eight joints, we'd be left with M equals two. Mobility higher than one means it takes more than one motor to control the system. Or if you only have one motor, then there'd be extra pieces just sort of flopping around with multiple possible configurations. Oppositely, how about if we added an extra link? I'll label it as link nine right across the middle. When adding this, we've added one more link and two more joints. And this results in M equals zero. Mobility of zero means that the system is rigidly locked. It is a structure and nothing can actually move. And if you add another link, which I'll label here as number 10, that would lead to a mobility of negative one, which adds redundancy, which means that even if you remove a link, the system would still be locked. So a mobility of one is your basic standard mechanism that can be controlled with one motor. Mobility higher than one means you need multiple motors to control it. Mobility of zero means it is locked in place and can't move. And mobility of negative values means that not only is it locked, there are redundant constraints so that you can even remove pieces and it would still be locked. All right, some different types of joints in this one, but remember we're first starting off how many moving pieces are in this mechanism? So each link is labeled one through four, but remember number one is labeled as the fixed link that's ground. So there's only actually three moving pieces in this mechanism. So we're starting off with a mobility of nine before subtracting away the joints. So there's two pin joints, each of which subtract two mobility. So I'll go ahead and subtract those off first, get us down to an M of five, but there's still three joints left, the blue, purple, and black ones. And for each of these joints, I'm just gonna ask the question, can the object move up and down? Can it move left to right? And can it rotate? And however many of those are restricted, I'm gonna subtract that many. And if I look along the wall first, this black joint, it cannot move left to right because the wall is blocking it. It can slide up and down, so that's okay. But it cannot rotate because of the big flat surface there. If it were rounded, maybe we would allow rotation, but with a flat surface along the wall, it's not able to rotate. So since two directions of motion are restricted, I'm subtracting two from the mobility number due to that joint along the wall. So looking at that slider joint in the middle, yes, it can rotate. Yes, it can slide left to right, but no, it cannot move up and down. So this slider joint only restricts motion in one direction. So I'm only gonna subtract one due to that slider joint. For this blue joint, it's clear that there's restricted motion in the direction connecting the two pieces. And it should also be clear that rotation along that round surface is also gonna be possible. I'm going to assume a smooth surface that does allow sliding without friction. So this joint is only restricting motion in one direction, so I'm just going to subtract one from mobility. And this then leads to a final answer of mobility equal to one. All right, last example, and this time the links aren't numbered, so I actually have to count them myself. Gosh. All right, so I count six possible moving pieces, each of which can move in three different directions. So that starts off with a mobility of 18 before subtracting off for any of the joints. So next I look at pin joints, which I have numbered in red because those are the easiest ones. A pin joint just subtracts two directions of motion. So after subtracting six pin joints, we're left with mobility of six. And there's three highlighted joints that I haven't looked at yet. So let's do those now. So let's start off with the purple joint up at the top. All right, so the block clearly cannot move in the direction towards ground. It should be able to slide along the ground though as a slider joint, that's its purpose. So if this were a wheel, we would consider it be able to rotate, but because there's a long flat surface along the ground, it can't roll along that blocky corner. Basically, blocks can't roll. So this joint restricts two directions of motion, only allows one, so we're gonna subtract two from the answer based on this joint. The slider joint in the middle allows rotation. It can slide in the direction of the slot, but it cannot move against the direction of the slot because there's stuff in the way. 
So since it only restricts motion in one direction, I'm only subtracting one from mobility due to this slot. All right, so looking at the wheel down at the bottom, the black joint, clearly the two surfaces can't push into each other. So that direction is definitely restricted and clearly rotation is allowed. And in this case, I'm going to assume that this wheel is a roll without slip wheel, that there is friction here and that the pieces cannot just slide across each other. Right, put a comment right on your drawing. Assume roll without slip. And if you're ever faced with a situation like this where you need to know whether there is friction preventing motion in a tangent direction like this, check the problem statement because it'll probably tell you right in there. And so after subtracting the two restricted motions for this roller joint based on the direction of contact and also the tangent direction based on an assumption of friction, we're left with mobility of one, meaning that this entire mechanism can be controlled by one single input. And here it is the best way to check that you got the right answer at the end of these problems is to look at your numerical value and if you got a value of m equals one it's probably right 60 percent of the time it works every time and if you got an m value that is not one you should double check your answer we almost always make mechanisms so that they can be controlled by a single input so the only time you're going to get an m value that's not one is when your professor is just giving you a tricky problem just to see if you can actually use the equation properly and now that you've learned about assessing the mobility of linkages you're ready to move on to designing your own so now you can watch this next video about designing a fast return crank rocker or a fast return crank slider mechanism thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day